Hello everyone. Okay, in this video, I will work with you on the question 23 in chapter 5. It is a complicated problem. So, let's work together. And please, I hope that you spend some time reading it and try to do it before looking at the solution or to the video. Okay, so, first of all, uh, the problem is you know, you want to know how much you need to invest today. Okay, yeah, how much I need to invest today. Uh, so, so what? So that uh, at the beginning of 11 years from now, I can withdraw 10,000 for the next five years. So for time value of money problem, it is very critical for us to identify the right point where any payment occur. So we make the investment today. So it is very easy, right at time zero, right? However, the next point in time is at the beginning of 11 years from now, you start draw draw money, right? Withdraw money. So at the beginning of the year 2011, uh, is that this point? This point or this point? Is that associated with 10, 11 or 12? Uh, in the class, I mean, uh, a lot of you make a mistake. So what does this mean with the beginning of year 11? In the timeline, beginning of 11 or the end of year 10 are at the same point. Okay? So think about that. Beginning of year 11. Is it here, here, or here? To answer that question, I need to look at the, begin at the beginning of my timeline. So over here. Uh, give me one second. Over here, this one is what? Is that year zero or year one? Of course, it is a year one, right? And the beginning of year one start with zero and end with number one. For that period, it is for the second year, right? Very clear. However, the second year start at the big at the end of one, and end at two. So it means this point right here is the end of year one or the beginning of year two. So now in the same uh, token, you know, the beginning of year eleven here is year eleven. Why? Please think about that. Don't take uh, my explanation is random, you know. Here is the year 11. The year 11 and at 11. Here, look at that. The year 2 and at year 2, right? Okay? So now, here's the year 11. And therefore, the beginning of the year 11 is this point. It means, at that point, you start withdraw your money yep how long how much you withdraw uh, not a big deal you withdraw like a ten thousand in the next five years so here you withdraw 10k one year two year four year i mean one two three four and five so you, you withdraw uh five times okay finally you still have a uh, twenty thousand, okay, plus an additional amount of twenty thousand in that last year, and yes, um, whatever uh, written in the book is not very clear. You can argue that the twenty thousand is made either at the beginning or at the end of the year fifteen, right? I totally agree with you. It is not hundred percent clear. However, if uh, I, uh, I mean. The setup, I mean, in that video and in the problem, we assume that the 20,000 is withdrawn at the end of the 15th year. Here. The last payment is right here. And again, I should be, I mean, if I, uh, I were the author of the book, I wouldn't be clearer. Okay? So now, how much you invest today? So that in the future you can withdraw one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, um, make that six withdraw. So how can we solve this problem? Okay, the idea of the problem is 
you can calculate the present value of all of the payment the present value of all payment must be equal to must be equal to your investment so the investment that can support your withdrawal in the future must be the present value of all payment in the future that is the idea I know it is a little bit complicated but think about that you can only withdraw 10 10 10 10 20 simply because the present value of those payment is the same as your investment today that's it so now the next question is how can we calculate the present value of that stream of payment uh, provided that you earn the interest rate of 6% there are a number of ways some is longer than the other some is more complicated than the other so let me show you the easiest way uh, the present value of a stream of payment equal to the sum of individual present value it means you calculate the present value of this present value of that present value present value present value present value and sum them up it gives you the PB right here okay so what is the present value of that first payment so the PB must be equal to 10 divided by 1 plus 6 percent now raised to power what which power 10 11 or 9 yeah so for us we need to count the period now for me I will look at the beginning so if the payment occur at the number one I will discount one period at number two I discount one two period and therefore if it occur at the number 10 I will discount for of course 10 period and therefore here's the power 10 10 divided by 1.06 power 10 right or you can simply look at the table uh, yeah, the present value table for this payment it will be in the row 10 years and in the uh, the row 10 years and in the column six percent right okay I hope you under uh, you, you got from that point on okay now I will go on and calculate the present value of second payment which is 10 divided by 1.06 raised to power which power of course 11 here's 10 divided by 1.06 raised to power 12 here's power 13 14 and eventually this one equal to uh, 20 divided by 1.06 power 15 right sorry I don't have much space in here power 15 yep and once you get 1 2 3 4 5 6 present value number you can simply add them up right Add them up so the sum is a present value of all future cash flow and it is what you need to invest today so it is very simple it requires you some uh, some time to calculate but uh, it the concept is very simple calculate present value present value and then sum them up okay another way to look at uh, to solve this problem will be shorter but more complicated yes uh, I will show you first of all we realize that part of the payment all of those 10 here is a is an annuity right how many years for the annuity one two three four five Interest rate at six percent, and therefore you can calculate the value at year nine of the annuity. 
remember that if you can look at the book again and you see that the present value table of an annuity will help you calculate uh, the present the value at the year v9 the value at year 9 so now yeah you look at the present value of an annuity okay table so in that you look for the uh, row one two three four five five years and how many percent six percent and the number in that cell is the number in that cell is four point two one two yep it is a present value for one dollar annuity and now you have ten thousand so you simply multiply by ten yep equal to four two point twelve of course, thousand. So it is a V9. The value at year 9. The value at year 9 of the annuity. We will work on the uh, 20,000 later. You know? Now, at that point, the, the value of the annuity is V9. You need to discount it back to year 0. So, uh, how many period you discount? Look, under the number one, I discount one period. Under number two, I discount two period. So under number nine, I discount by nine period. So how to discount it? You can use a financial table or simply take 1.06 divided by 1.06 power nine. And therefore, you have. 24,930 So it is the present value at this point of the annuity right here So now our job is simply calculate the present value of that last payment of 20 So you can use the financial table or financial calculator but at this time see, let me do it using the um, formula the present value is that 20,000 equal to 20,000 divided by 1.06 raised to power again 15 15 and it gives you 20,000 divided by 1.06 raised to power uh, 15 3,000 um, 8,000 <laughs> 3 45.30 so now you have present value of the annuity you have the present value of that single sum so the sum of present value equal to these adding these right and it equal to 24,930 plus uh, 8,345 it give you the number uh, 33,276 33,276 yep so all in all what does this mean it means if right now today I I invest 33276 in that account, earning 6% interest. Now, uh, starting at the beginning of 11 years from today, I, I can withdraw that stream of payment. Yep. Uh, thank you. We are done. Bye.